Mr. Chairman, um, we are, we're recording and live on YouTube. I am only uh, only waiting for one more person, but that's Dinas Berbickus, and his application is on later in the evening. Okay, so we can get started then. Yes. Good evening, welcome to the Environmental Impact Commission meeting, January 12, seven o'clock, the web-based meeting hosted on Zoom. All votes will be roll call vote. First item on the agenda is roll call. Dr. Mary? I'm here. Jeff Harold? Here. Hi. Sued? Here. Matt Rose? Here. Tony Gallo, we have a quorum. Next item is the acceptance of the minutes from December 8th, 2021. I make a motion we accept the minutes as presented as all members have had copies and received and read them. Second. Motion made and second to accept the minutes as presented. <laughs> Remarks, questions? If not, I'll try your minds. Dr. Mary. Yes, sir. Jeff Harold. Yes. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Chairman votes yes. Okay, next item on the agenda is all business. Regulated activity 1139. Attorney Beecher has asked that we table this until our next meeting on January 26th. Have a motion to table. Make a motion to table regulated activity 1139 to the next regular scheduled meeting. That's January 26th. I'll second yes. it. Motion made and second at the table regulated activity 1139 on the next meeting on January 26th. Well, any questions? No, there's no questions on the table. Okay. Roll call. Mary Crone, Dr. Mary. Yes. Jeff Harold. Aye. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Bernie Gill. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is regular activity 1140 Castro on 197 Southern Boulevard. Uh, Ralph, did you get a copy of the um, approval? Ralph, you're muted. Okay, so yes, I did get a copy of the report. Um, if the commission doesn't have any questions about the uh, the plan we submitted last time and the explanation that I gave them, then I'll defer to uh, Mr. Danny's report. Okay, but thank I you. If I have questions, Rich, you said they have a question. No question. Did you want to add anything, Richard? You all set. I'm all set. Uh, I just wanted to point out that the um, use of the uh, biostimulant is one of the conditions in there. And then the uh, fill within the 12 foot radius of the tree should be removed by hand. Okay. There's 10 conditions on this report. Yes. You want to accept the report, anybody? Make a motion. We accept the report with the conditions as noted. I'll second. Motion made and second to accept regulated TV 1140 with the 10 conditions. Roll call vote. Dr. Mary. Yes. Jeff Harold. Yes. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Chairman votes yes. Okay. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is regulated TV 1143. <clears throat> with 18 Marion Street. Uh, let's see who's is uh, Abigail's here. Yes. Abigail, did you see the report? I did. I received the report and um, I have no issues or questions with it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have anything to add, Richard? No, this one, uh, this one was pretty straightforward. There's seven conditions on this. Um, just to ensure that none of the construction material is stored on site. Okay. 
Motion made. So we make a motion to accept. Make a motion to approve. Uh, I don't have the regulation. The, oh, here it is. 1143. Uh, 1143. 11, regulated activity 1143 with the seven conditions of approval. I'll second it. Second. Yeah, that was me. Jeff Carroll, second. <clears throat> Any remarks by anyone? Roll call vote. Dr. Mary. Yes. Jeff Harrell. Yes. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. And, uh, unanimous. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks have a great night. Attended. Hello? I was just saying thank you and have a great night. <laughs> to you too, everyone. Nice seeing you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is regulated activity 1145. Is Dennis here, Six Shore Road? Yes. Uh, good evening for oh, yeah, the record, Dennis. Dennis Verbeckis, our talent engineering group. Here on behalf of the applicant, um, we uh, have received comment from staff, uh, reviewed, and uh, are in agreement with uh, recommendations made. Thank you. Richard, do you have anything to add? Uh, nothing to add with this one. It's very, very similar to the adjacent property. Um, but no, this one, it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Need a motion? Make a motion to uh, accept uh, regulated activity 1145, to approve act activity 1145. With the eight conditions? Oh, yes. Yeah, with the existing conditions in the document. Yes. Second. I have a second. Second. Remarks by anyone? Roll call vote. Dr. Mary. Yes, sir. Jeff Harold. Yes. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Ronnie Gallus and I. Have, am I driving you guys nuts yet? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> New business, regulated activity 1146. Five Old Post Road, Ralph. Yes, good evening for the record, Ralph Gallagher representing the applicant, uh, um, Mr. Keith Monroe. I believe that he's here with us this evening. Um, this application was previously approved years ago. I'm sure there's a record of it, Rich, uh, for exactly, and I quote, and I emphasize exactly the same thing as we have now. In fact, the plan we got, the footprint of the plan we got Approved back then, I believe it was um, in 07 or 08. Um, the house was designed by an architect to match exactly the footprint that was approved. Um, to, for the com commissioners that weren't here then, I don't think there were many. Um, we got this property uh, with the wetland running through the middle, and we were able to get a temporary roadway or uh, access drive to the rear to put the septic in back in 07, 08. And at that time we got that approved and we actually went in and installed that septic system. That septic you see on the plan up and back exists. And it was, it was installed, it was, it was inspected, it was reviewed and approved as an as-built drawing. Um, so uh, there was a culvert going across the driveway and a, and a temporary construction uh, driveway. Um, and then the house was out front and it has, a little bit of it goes into the wetlands and uh, the swap on that was to take that area to the, well, it would be to the south of the dwelling um, that was filled in the wetlands in the past. And to remove that was the mitigation for building the house. Uh, we got a variance to the front, you know, everything was in set and, and what happened was the economy uh, fell out and um, interest fell off. And the owner chose not to uh, continue and uh, the application ran out. And we are back now for just a reapproval of exactly what was approved back then. Um, I would recommend an addition uh, to that. Uh, back then the proposal was to remove that temporary construction access to the rear. I believe that's a poor idea because uh, the septic may, may need to be um, uh, maintained and, and that would be 
uh, silly to go in and tear out something that's 14 years old and make any kind of a mess out there. Leaving the roadway would make the most sense. And that that's uh, that's basically it. Thank you. Richard, have you had a chance to review this yet? Uh, no, sir, I have not. Not yet. Anybody that has looked at it, do you have any questions before we table it? I have one question, um, if I may, through the chair. Ralph, uh, what, does that, what does that roadway consist of? Just sand and gravel. Yeah. Okay. Sounds, yeah. Any other questions? None here. Mm -hmm. Motion to table is in order until Richard has a chance to review this. I make a motion we table regulated activity 1146 and uh, until further uh, information is available next meeting. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded to table regulated activity 1146 until our next meeting on January 26th. Roll call vote. Dr. Mary. Yes. Jeff Harold. Aye. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Bernie Gallows and I. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Pardon me? You're saying thank you very much. I just said thank you very much. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're welcome. Next item on the agenda is regular TV 1147, Tegan Point Road. Application for an addition. There's uh, who's representing Tegan Road? Good evening, everybody. It's Juan Vega, the owner of the house. You're representing yourself tonight? Yep. Oh, okay. Everybody had that in their packet. They had a chance to review it. Richard, did you get a chance to look at it? I have not reviewed the plans, however. Uh, about seven months ago, I did go out to the site uh, and speak with Mr. Vega as to the proposed activity. Um, it does appear that the majority of the work, actually the entirety of the work, will be conducted in the Upland Review area. I think we measured it out to be roughly 55 feet from uh, the bank of the stream that runs back there. Um, but I, I have not prepared a report yet. Anyone have any questions? I think this could be administrative, uh, Richard. Yes. I do, yes, sir. Okay, motion uh, is in order to table meeting. I'll make a motion to move regulated activity 1147 to administrative approval. I'll second the motion. Motion made and seconded to move regulated activity 1147 to administrative approval be presented at our next regular meeting. Okay, Dr. Mary. Yes. <laughs> Jeff Harold. Aye. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everybody. Welcome. Regular TV 1148. It's um, 67 Old Boston Road and Dynas. I believe you have this. Dynas. Yes. Good evening for the record. Dynas Verbicus, professional engineer with Artel Engineering Group here on behalf of the applicants. Um, what uh, we are uh, have prepared is a map depicting what our client wishes to do, which is put a uh, small... Uh, strip of decking or in addition to his existing decking um, to make it from an existing about 11 feet wide from the home out towards Lake Wabika, uh, extended another four feet. And then at the north end of that, uh, proposing to screen in a section of, uh, of new decking. Um, I guess if it would be best if I shared a map, if I'm um, oh. so allowed. Just, just a sure, moment, just Great. a moment. Let me make that available.
All right, Dinus, you should be okay. Okay. And there we have it. So um, this uh, property, 67 Old Blossom Post Road, is located on the banks of Lake Wabika. Um, as you enter into the uh, development, uh, just basically stay on the main road and the uh, home is on the right-hand side. So, um, boy, it's tough to scroll here. Um, <clears throat> but the home is uh, generally a, a modest-sized uh, rectangular shape has an existing deck that runs about 11 feet from the rear of the home outwards towards the backyard. And it runs across the majority of, uh, of the property. Uh, what they do wish to do is extend or build out the deck another four feet and then run that clear across the entire uh, fa rear face of the home. And this uh, northern section they wish to add on and uh, screen it in so that they can enjoy the outdoors without the mosquitoes. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, to do this, uh, what they will need to do is replace their existing septic tank, which currently is underneath the deck, right adjacent to the uh, foundation of the home in this location here. So what we've proposed is a new septic tank to be installed in this location. And this location is greater than 75 feet um, to the banks of Lake Wabika. I'll scroll down and show you again. But the near, from this nearest corner of the septic tank that's being proposed to the nearest point on the wetlands that were delineated uh, is greater than 75 feet. <clears throat> um, it's fairly straightforward uh, what they're proposing to do. Um, we did uh, prepare, in addition, uh, replacement leaching area uh, in this location uh, in the event that the septic system that is currently in place needs to be replaced. Uh, we are indicating a location where that uh, can happen. Uh, but right now there's no intrusion, no work along the water's edge that's being proposed. Uh, everything will be uh, quite distant uh, from the, uh, the wetlands and Lake Wabika itself. Um, the only real excavations that we're anticipating and the only soil movement that we're uh, anticipating here would be for uh, putting in footings uh, for the deck. And then, of course, uh, excavation or actually probably crushing of the existing septic tank, filling it in with uh, clean soil and then excavation and uh, burying of the new septic tank in this location. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. I'm, having trouble, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading the fine print. Is that a 1,250 gallon tank? Is that what it says? Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering I, I have troubles. Yeah, tw exactly. 1,250 gallon. And that was the same size that they're taking out? Uh, the tank that they're taking out now is 1,000 gallons in size. Oh, okay. Um, they When, when, when the uh, owners of the property initially approached me, uh, they wanted to actually build their home out kind of as the deck is proposed here. Um, and when I explained to them that they would have to replace their the entire ex existing septic system. Um, they uh, balked at that and then rethought um, the, the whole process and, and thought, all right, well, while they have the funds, they'll build out the deck. And if they desire to put an addition on the home, it would go up rather than out. Gotcha. Okay. So, so that's the, the, the up, upsize yeah. in the tank. Is, is in the event that they would like to do something in the future. Right, add, add a couple of bedrooms. I see. Thank you. Yep, you got it. Okay. I think you can take that now, Titus. Okay. Any further questions, Richard? Um, just, Dinus, do you want to point out uh, 
what are the erosion controls you got on there? Is that a silt fence I saw? Yeah, we've uh, just, you know, standard fare, silt fence uh, proposed downslope of uh, all the proposed work. And again, we anticipate very little uh, earthwork uh, being required and pretty abundant with the erosion controls clear across the entire back of the property or it actually um, about 50, 50 plus feet away from the uh, edge of the delineated wetlands at the nearest point. Any further questions? None from me. Motion to table is in order. I'll make a motion. We table regulated activity 11, no, hold on, sorry, 1148. I'll second. Until our next meeting, January 26th. Yes, I'm sorry, till next meeting on January 26th. Motion made and second to the table. Roll call vote. Dr. Mary? Yes. Jeff Harold? Aye. Mark Massoud? Aye. Matt Rose? Aye. Right Unanimous. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is Thank you. Activity 11. You're welcome. Regular Activity 1149, 44, 46, and 48, Shelter Rock Road. And who is representing them? Good evening. Uh, my name is Jared Port, and my colleague, uh, Dan Wolfram, here from Woodard and Kern. We represent Great American Insurance Company. Um, we have prepared, it's for the remediation of approximately 1,700 linear feet uh, located with a former rail bed located within, 100, within the 100 foot review area, upland review area. And we've prepared a short uh, presentation, if you'd like to see it, outlining the scope. Sure. Sure. So, Mary, I think, am I able to? I think you should be all set. Okay. Let me know. Can everyone let me know if you could see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, as I said, this is a it's a former rail bed. It's a test track remediation a project. Um, it's shown here in the uh, highlighted areas, the area within the hundred foot. Upland review area is highlighted in yellow, and this it's the former Sperry Rail site. Our client is it's owned and operated by Great American Insurance Company, located at 44, 40, 44, 46, and 48 Shelter Rock Road. And as I mentioned, uh, myself, a project engineer, and my colleague Dan Wolfram, is the project manager, is also on this call from Woodard and Kern. And we'll just go through a little a brief background, uh, you know, the proposed nature of the activity, and an anticipated schedule. Uh, just, you know, for those that are unaware, um, this is the former Sperry Rail site. I'm sure many uh, know this location, but just for, you know, proximity, it's it's near the Danbury Sports Dome, as you can see here on the left. Uh, the Metro North Rail Line runs to the uh, west of the site, and the Simprog Brook also runs to the east of the site. Um, if you direct your attention to the right photo here, the, there's two main parcels that are owned, as I mentioned, the 4446 Shelter Rock Road. Parcel is the main parcel is operational. It's, uh, there are buildings present. Um, the 48 Shelter Rock Road parcel is uh, encompassed around wetlands. And you can see this, the rail, former rail bed that runs down um, as indicated on this photo. So it's surrounded by wetlands on both sides as, as well as the property boundary. Uh, brief background, um, it's a, the overall, it's approximately 2,900 linear foot um, of former testing rail that was used by the previous tenants ferry rail service to test calibrate uh, rail equipment. Um, throughout, you know, this was operated since the late 40s, early 50s. So there's been a significant amount of time that has passed during these operations. Uh, underlining the soil, uh, as the vehicles passed over these rails, the underlying soil um, is contaminated through analytical testing that we've performed from polyaromatic hydrocarbons, which are essentially petroleum related compounds, uh, metals and polychlorinated biphenyls, exceeding criteria at which requires remediation of this soil. This release was occur occurred from historical uh, drips 
and leaks from test vehicle equipment and engines as they passed over the rail and they could perform their testing operations. And as I previously mentioned, although it's 2,900 linear feet, which is the entire project, only 1,700 linear feet are located within the 100 foot upland review area as indicated by this yellow highlighting in the figure. And we refer to this as the wetlands test track only since it traverses through this, the wetlands portion of the site. Uh, the actual proposed remediation, the, 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 the rail bed is a, approximately 30 feet wide, which is approximately three feet above the adjacent wetland areas. Um, it's hard to see in this photo, but it's probably another 10, 15 feet each side here. Um, as you can see here, it's hard to see that the delineated wetlands are in, the, in brown. Um, the proposed remediation can, can exit, uh, is of shallow soil, generally Excavated, excavation will be performed to about a foot deep, and it'll be limited to the area uh, within the current rail ties, as you can see in this photo to the right. The, the rail was previously removed as part of the uh, relocation of Sperry Rail Service, but the rail and the impacted soil and ties were left behind. So our proposed remediation would be approximately within this red area along the entire length of this, this rail. And just as I noted, you know, earlier, the 20, all 2,900 linear feet will also, you know, will be removed as well, not just from the wetlands, but that's the focus of this presentation. Just a, a few key elements uh, from the a site preparation standpoint, um, we will line the entire perimeter of that wetlands track in ero uh, erosion controls consisting of silt fence and straw waddles that are staked as is shown in this picture from another scope on site a few years back. Um, we will conduct limited clearing and grubbing in order to install those erosion controls as well as access the site. It's slightly overgrown uh, since uh, Sperry left the site in 2018. As you can see in this bottom photo here, and, and as I mentioned, the rails removed. Um, we will the material will likely be trucked out into this uh, the, the main portion of the site where we'll have a material management area, a decontamination pad, and a construction entrance to pre prevent any off-site tracking of, of any uh, soil. A few other key elements I wanted there's, uh, to mention, there are two um, conduits that, are, that run under this, test, this former rail bed. You know, we call them the, the north and south drainage ditch. They transmit water from the west of the tracks onto our site here in the wetlands. And they're shown in these photos. It's a small uh, RCP pipe. And we would protect those structures as well during throughout the remediation. So the, uh, the general approach from the excavation restoration standpoint, as I mentioned, it'll be 1,700 linear feet within the upland review area. Uh, approximately 10 feet wide, resulting in an area of 17,000 square feet of disturbance within that area. And we'll be removing the impacted soil as well as the, the railroad ties to a depth of approximately one foot. We'll then uh, collect confirmation samples in accordance with the state regulations, state and federal regulations to confirm that a remediation is complete. And once analytical is received and favorable, we will backfill with clean gravel and uh, restore with topsoil to match pre-construction grades. We then apply an upland seed mix, stabilize, and continue monitoring until the vegetation is established. And we are anticipating a project schedule for this from the site preparation, excavation, and offsite disposal standpoint of the material from February to March. And we will backfill grade seed and stabilize uh, from March to May. And just a brief summary, uh, we, we're conducting the remediation in order to achieve compliance with state and federal requirements cleanup uh, criteria. Um, that'll be the excavation and offsite disposal of approximately 17,000 square feet within the 100 foot upland review area. And we will conduct restoration in order to match pre construction conditions. And this will be conducted between February and May of 2022. And we were also simultaneously working on the grading permit that's associated with this. And we're happy to answer any questions. I, I do have one question. I, I didn't realize that the PCP removal, as bad as they are, is only goes down a foot. I thought they would have to go deeper for that. I'm surprised. Is that the standard depth for that now for PCBs? 
So there's no standard depth. I mean, it's it's based on our analytical testing and a, a conceptual site model of how those that contaminant might have got there. So uh, technically, in this area, um, there are. I'm just going to go to the site wide. There really are no PCBs that we've detected on the wetlands track. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, however, thought said, I thought you said there were. So okay. Well, they are, but they're on another area of the site. But we've just included them as a as a kind of a worst case scenario because we'll be collected uh, collecting confirmation samples for that. Gotcha. Okay. So really this portion of the wetlands track will only be petroleum related compounds and select metals. Um, but to answer your question, I mean, it, it, it's completely dependent on, you know, the, the, how it was released, the depth could, you know, if it was a larger volume of contaminant released, it could migrate deeper, for instance. So. Right. Okay. Generally the impacts we found along the entire test track here were limited to near surface soil from zero to one foot deep. Oh, interesting. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Any further questions? You can take that down now, Ford. Richard, do you have anything to add at this point? Uh, I do not, but I do remember um, checking in on the progress of a previous uh, approval that uh, on the, on the same site. Um, there was additional work done previously. Uh, this sounds very similar, and, and you know it was conducted very well and. and all, uh, all precautions were taken. Thank you. Motion to table is in order. Mr. Or Chairman, may I ask a question, please? Yes, go ahead. Is there is there any is there any potential use uh, or uh, anticipated as a, a kind of recreational trail or, or or anything of the nature or what's the final disposition of the area after? after uh, cleanup and, 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 and um, stabilization? I mean, at this time, I think that's currently unknown. I think the client is open. Um, right now, you know, it's owned and operated by the client. So, um, you know, once the remediation is performed, it'll be free of any contaminants. Um, but at right. this time, I, I don't think there's any future reuse scenario planned, but it, it is certainly a possibility and up for discussion. Mr. Chairman, one more. Uh, what is the property currently being used for? Uh, right now, that's, there's a series. There's several vacant buildings that you know. One being Sperry Rail, who left. Uh, mostly, it's an office. There's an office building with several tenants, and uh, another kind of manufacturing type operation. Another separate portion of the site. Okay, it's Curtis, Curtis Wright. Is Curtis there. Wright would be that? Yeah, they're okay. in the middle right. central building. I, was, I just remember seeing the sign. Okay, thank you. Hmm. So there might, if I may, if I may add just a second thought, there may be an opportunity, and I don't know if it leads through, uh, you know, through the wetland is visually uh, aesthetic or it leads, uh, you know, to a, to a viewing area or something, but it might, there might be an opportunity to, again, just put that, since it's going back in its original elevation, it might be a opportunity to make a little walking trail, a uh, trail out to a nice view, something of the sort, just to enjoy uh, the, enjoy the area, so to speak. Sure, yeah. I mean, we are restoring it with seed, so that's certainly an opportunity. You went further. Good point, Mark. Thank you. Sure. Motion to table's in order. I'll make a motion. We table uh, regulated activity 1149 on uh, Hill Sperry Rail site till the next meeting on the 26th of January. Your second. I'll second. Oh. Very second. Okay, roll call vote. Mary Crowley, Dr. Mary. Yes. Jeff Harold. Aye. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Okay, thank you. This table to our next regular meeting on January 26th. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda, regulated TV 1150, Pioneer Realty, 13 to 15 Miami Brook Road. So is anyone here for that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I, I'm, I'm here. Jay Klein from Carmody Law. Okay. Also joined by Mike Lambert, uh, civil one or, or engineer, uh, and okay. uh, 
Bob uh, Serenci uh, on behalf of Apple uh, is with us as well. Uh, if you want to, if you want to put this up on the screen and show us, or how do you want to do this? If that's okay, Mary, am I all right to share my screen? Yes, yes, you are. Perfect. I'll do that. And while while I'm clicking here, I just wanted to, if it's all right, uh, you know, I, I've been. Uh, this is the first time I'm I'm working in, in Danbury and just appreciate uh, your staff, Miss Larkin's uh, assistance and, and making sure we got you all the copies you needed and, and, and understood the procedures. Uh, really appreciate that, uh, Mary. Uh, it was very helpful. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so with, 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 with that, um, we're, this is uh, just an aerial shot of the property we're, we're here to discuss, uh, known as 15 Marybrook Road. Um, uh, the, the applicant uh, is really related to an automo a car dealership company known as Curry Auto. Uh, they recently purchased this property, and I'll just click through a couple of existing conditions photos um, that uh, uh, really before uh, they took ownership from 2018 till I think uh, this past summer was really used to construct, uh, store construction uh, materials and, and debris and, and things of that nature. It's a two and a half acre site. Uh, fronts on a couple of roads, so it's it's a quite a unique property, um, uh, as you can see from its uh, orientation along Marybrook and Sugar Hollow Road, and also a little bit of Wallingford Road uh, uh, as well. Uh, this is a site that uh, I believe uh, the Economic Department and other uh, organizations in the city have identified as a site that's maybe not living up to its. Uh, economic potential and not doing all that it can in terms of contributing to the community. Uh, uh, we think uh, we have a proposal uh, that will help make this property really be the best that it can be uh, for the community. And, and we're really eager and excited to, to share that with you. And that's to uh, build a, a Mercedes dealership uh, on the property. Uh, this is a project that uh, received approval from your colleagues on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I believe your colleagues on the zoning commission <clears throat> recently amended the zoning regulations to allow for this use in, in the zone, the IL-40 zone. Um, uh, so we think this is something that the, the city uh, at large uh, uh, hopefully will, will welcome and will be just as excited uh, as we are. And uh, what brings us uh, before you all this evening is the fact that a corner of this property, this corner right up here, I believe, is uh, within an upland review area of an offsite uh, wetlands. So uh, uh, I know that Mike, uh, I'll turn it over to him in a minute uh, so that he can discuss the, the, the impact or lack thereof that this project will have in, in this upland review area. Um, here's another nice uh, photograph of, of, of what we're hoping to deliver to the community subject to, to your approval and, and the community's eventual approval. What, what you can't see here in these renderings um, uh, is, you know, that we anticipate that uh, this this dealership will bring 35 to 40 jobs uh, uh, along along with it. So, uh, you know, I know that's not a not a, not a wetlands concern, but I know it's something that folks are always interested in when it comes to uh, economic development and, and things of that nature. So, uh, with, with that in mind, uh, I think now is a, a good time for me. I will put up our our site plan. Uh, and I'll continue to click and, and zoom in, in and out as Mike uh, uh, Mike directs me. Uh, so Mike, would you want to pick it up? You know, Mike, I, you, I think you're muted. I, I, I'm, I'm not able to hear you. All right, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Right. Yes. Right. yes. Uh, thank you, Commission members. Uh, for the record, Michael Lambert, professional engineer with Civil 143 Sherman Hill Road, Woodbury. Um, as Jay had mentioned, this parcel is um, kind of technically two, uh, two lots, but it's 2.5 acres surrounded by Sugar Hollow Road to the east, Myra Brook to the south, Wallingford Road to the west, and then the Danbury Airport to the north side of our site. Um, from a wetlands perspective, to the north of us, there is Kissin Brook that runs through the airport, and there is the open channel up in the north um, northeast corner of the property. And on the eastern side of Sugar Hollow, there was a detention basin that was kind of created and takes storm drainage off of Sugar Hollow and Myrie Brook. It gets discharged into there, and eventually from that section, it goes actually underneath Sugar Hollow and goes into Kissin Brook. Um, but from a 
100 foot up in a review area, it's only the a small area from Kissing Brook that goes onto our property. As you can see, Jay circling, it's the red dashed line is the up and review. And then the red line and two dots and the orange hatch is the approximate wetland areas um, from what we are, we're taken from the town's um, storm drainage and topography maps. Um, so from this area, we've got 2.5 acres for the entire site. There's only 6,250 square feet of up and review area on our property. When we were looking at trying to develop this piece for the car dealership, being able to have the parking lot, have the circulation around the building, we are disturbing 4,000 square feet of up and review area. Um, however, this whole area is actually going to get drained and contained on site um, and will not be allowed to discharge across the property and onto the airport property and eventually into Kissenbrook. Uh, so we do have a retaining wall that we're proposing because we do have to fill in that backside a little bit just so we kind of have a level um, parking lot throughout the entire site for easy access. And Jay, if you can go to the second page. Sure. So I'm gonna start talking about a little about the drainage and grading. So as I said, we do have the retaining wall going around to the north side of the building. That back corner that's gonna be in the upland review area will get self-contained into a catch basin, go, be directed through our collection system and eventually goes through a water quality structure and then into a underground detention system. Uh, throughout the entire site, we've got 13 catch basins, three water quality structures, and a uh, two foot tall underground uh, detention system that contains 135 chambers. Uh, through this storm drainage, we are decreasing the peak flow of the 25 year storm um, of going off site, not only to Myrie Brook, but eventually into Kissing Brook. Um, as this kind of watershed for the site, part of it goes to the north to the Kissing Brook. A section of it goes to Wallingford Road, and another section of it goes to Myrie Brook. Um, but we are taking our entire uh, stormwater collection system, containing it on site. Um, the underground system is designed to infiltrate, but we aren't. Through the calculations, we were not taking credit for it. Uh, so that's just kind of an added plus if there is the possibility for it to infiltrate. Uh, but we are treating the water before it goes into the underground system. Um, from a erosion control standpoint, uh, I believe it's the next page here. Mm -hmm. Actually, one more page after that. Okay. So go. we are going to kind of wrap the entire site in a uh, silt fence to be able to hold back any uh, soil or drainage that might go off site. But as I said, there's also a retaining wall that's going to be a across the entire northern part of the uh, property. So eventually the retaining wall is kind of also gonna act as a uh, sediment control when it gets constructed. We do have an erosion control, or sorry, a um, anti-tracking pad uh, construction entrance off of Myrie Brook and all of our catch basins will be fitted with um, inlet protections during the construction process. Um, so that kind of wraps up um, my presentation for this for you guys. I'd be turning it back over to Jay. Yeah, I mean, you know, thank you, Mike. Uh, you know, we, we are proud of the application we've, we've, we've put together. Uh, you know, Mike is here to the extent there, there are technical uh, uh, questions. Bob is here if you're curious to know more about, you know, Curry and their, you know, just uh, business. Uh, but we, we hope that we earn uh, uh, your support for this uh, this exciting project. Could you take that down for now? Sure. Anyone have any questions on the project so far? Nope. Very clear. Rich, you want to wait? You're not. You're not ready yet. I'm not ready. I did just have one question. What's the what's the um, the height of that retaining wall? The max height's about uh, six feet. 
Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Mr. Chairman? Yes. <clears throat> um, through, um, through, my, through my experience, I'm familiar with the site as the, um, the, old, Sayers, uh, the old Sayers property. Uh, and, uh, and he certainly um, had, his, had his running issues with the town for years, if not decades. Um, I'm curious uh, as to how the soil delineation uh, was. Well, let me ask this: Was there was there any <clears throat> as an as a soil scientist looked at the site itself, or am I did I hear that the inference of wetlands and watercourses was taken from a city map or is uh, rele relegated to to the open watercourse? And I'm just curious as to a little more information on that, how that was, how that was uh, delineated. And the reason I ask is that, um, again, he he had running battles with the, with the city over over the years uh, in terms of filling of of wetlands and watercourses, uh, and it may not have been specifically on this property. It may have been on adjoining properties. But um, I'm curious as to how those. Uh, delineations, current delineations were, were, were made. Yeah, so there, we did have a soil scientist on the site. Um, he did produce a letter stating that there was no wetlands on the property that according to the soils map and the mapping that the town has on record, that was what we had to go off of, of what the soils are off the property. Um, Unlike surveyors, the wetland soil scientists don't really have the option to be able to go on someone else's property and delineate where those wetlands are. Um, if I don't know if uh, I know we kind of went back and forth. Um, yeah, I don't know if I believe that I may not have sent that uh, soils report to you. Um, it was by our soil scientist Ann Cole. Um, if that has not gotten into uh, possession by the, the city, I'll make sure uh, tomorrow I can drop off a copy uh, to the city. Great, that'd be great, thank you. Anybody have any further questions? Motion to table is in order. Anybody wanna to move to table? I'll move that we table application 1150 uh, to the next regularly scheduled meeting. On January 26th? On January 26th. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion made and seconded at table until January 26th, 22. Roll call, roll call vote, Mary Cronin. Yes. Dr. Mary, I'm sorry. No, Jeff Harrell. Aye. Mark Bissoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Motion carries. We'll be in, we'll be in touch. Great. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the nice evening. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda. Regulated activity 1151. Uh, this is 18 and 20 Lakeview Drive. Ralph, are you still? Yeah, okay, Ralph. Okay. I am. Hi, good evening, everybody. Again, uh, Ralph Gallagher representing the applicant. Um, Mr. Vogel for uh, Lots 2425, also known as 18-20 Lakeview Road. Um, this is a lakefront, half-acre lakefront lot um, of which there was, there's an existing dwelling and a cottage, which is... Uh, so there's really two dwellings on the property currently, and they're very close to the uh, the uh, western property line, the 440. And the proposal is, because they're older and smaller, is to uh, demolish them and move and build a new house more, more away from the lake, uh, further to the east, kind of tucked into the hillside. Um, and other than building the house, uh, there's a well that exists up far up on the uh, other property that's shared, um, but the owner owns that property also. 
There's an existing septic that was put in in 1989, approximately. Um, that was that's code complying still to today. Uh, we've done another future B100, you know, in case in the future something happens to that. We have a another code complying system proposed for future. So there's no septic construction needed to be done other than installing the septic tank, the pump station, uh, build the dwelling, uh, connect the driveway, you know, do the erosion sediment controls and whatever plantings they're going to do. And I believe we received um, permit information from First Light. So uh, we either have the permit or we'll have the permit in hand very soon for First Light. Although this application for you has no uh, involvement with First Light. So uh, we're keeping it simple and moving away from the uh, lake with the new house. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can certainly, I'll certainly answer them. Questions, anyone? Rich, you have anything at this time? Not at this time, no, not yet. Still anyone reviewing. Anyone else have any question? Motion in order. Table. Motion to table uh, application 1151 to the January 26th meeting. There's a second. A second. It's going to be a Thank busy. You. <laughs> Thank you. Roll call. Dr. Mary. Yes. Jeff Harold. Aye. Mark Pursued. Aye. Matt Rose. Hi. Thank you. Okay, right. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, have a good one. Good night. Good night. Next item on the agenda, Red Lake Teddy 1152, Candlewood Pines, lots one through five. Could the formal approval before? Is there someone here? Uh, yes, good evening, uh, Mr. Commissioner. Uh, this is uh, Nick Ushjak. That's spelled Y-U-S-C-H-A-K. I'm a registered landscape architect with DCA LLC at 40 Old New Milford Road in Brookfield, Connecticut. Um, I'm here representing the applicant, Pamela Equities Corporation. Uh, we seek to reapprove the development of this property. Uh, this was former EIC number 769. The approval expired on December 12th. 2021. Um, as stated, the owner has not started construction due to their financial planning considerations. Uh, there is no change of circumstance at the site uh, or to the plans or to the application. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar the commission is with the application. I know it's late. Uh, I can walk you through it if you desire. Guys, you want to look at it? Yeah, put it up for us, please. Okay. I would like to share the screen, please. You should be available. Uh, it should be available to you, Nick. Okay. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Okay. Can everybody see the screen now? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, Basically, the site has frontage on Winnebago Trail, and it's on the Candlewood Lake waterfront. Uh, it's 1.29 acres approximately. There's about 330 feet of waterfront on Candlewood Lake. The site is wooded. It's gently to uh, steeply sloped. There's um, an upland review area that is this line that's uh, 200 feet from Candlewood Lake. Uh, basically, uh, the upland review area that's been altered is 0.74 acres. Uh, the former approval with conditions uh, was for, uh, this is a community area for residential dwellings at Candlewood Pines. The uh, proposed development uh, consists of a, um, a kayak and canoe storage building, approximately 1,100 square feet. 
there is a uh, crushed stone driveway and parking for 15 cars off of Winnebago Trail. There is a, um, a gravel trail, crushed stone trail that goes down to a proposed dock. And this is for, uh, this is um, a floating wood boat slip for uh, 10 boats. Uh, all proposed grading will be stabilized with a uh, New England roadside matrix upland seed mix. There are uh, mitigation plantings per the planting schedule down on the, to the east of the uh, proposed storage uh, building that's between the storage building and the lake. There's also a uh, three foot high maximum boulder wall on the east side and the south side of that building. Uh, there are no proposed bathrooms, therefore there's no proposed septic system there is no proposed water supply, no proposed filling of the water course or the wetland. And there's approximately a six month uh, construction time when they begin to work. And, uh, and we have uh, erosion and sedimentation controls in place also as detailed on our uh, sedimentation and erosion control detail sheet. Uh, any questions? Anyone? Okay, thank you. You can take that down. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Richard, do you have any, anything at this point? Um, so the, the proposed doc, I was just curious, is that going to require first light's approval as well? Uh, that already, I'm sorry, uh, that already does. It's got, it's existing? Yeah, uh, it's not an existing, but it has, uh, let's see. We had a uh, letter of filing consent back in 2007 and also a um, letter of filing consent for this property in 2010. And that's also in the project report. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone have any questions on us now at this time? Nope. Motion's in order. Motion to the table, anybody? Motion to table uh, application 1152, Pamela Equities to the January 26th regular meeting. Second. Motion made and seconded to the table regulated activity, 1152 until January 26, 2022. Roll call vote. Dr. Mary. Yes. Jeff Harold. Aye. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Chairman is aye. That's just unanimously the table. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Next item of the agenda, the only thing you have, you have correspondence in your packet, which I'm sure everybody's read. And the table, time to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll second that. I thought maybe you guys wanted to stay a while. Okay. <laughs> Motion made and seconded to adjourn. Dr. Mary. Yes, sir. Jeff Harrell. Aye. Mark Massoud. Aye. Matt Rose. Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, everyone. We had a nice meeting. Thank you for all your input. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night, Thanks, Gary. See you. Bye-bye.